Well, hello everybody. It is question and answer time. Quite a few specific questions regarding this beautiful vessel, our 98 Sea Ray 330 Sundancer. Um, as most of you who follow my channel know that we just acquired this boat this year and this is our first season aboard it. Now I try to share as much as I can of this boat and our travels, the limited uh, travels that we have had, but I'm getting, um, like I said, a bunch of specific questions regarding um, topics that relate specifically to this boat and this model, the 330 Sundancer. So I am going to answer them as best as I can and rather just reply to the uh, private messages and emails and all that directly. I'm going to share it with everybody so you all get a better handle on what people are wanting to know about the boat and my thoughts regarding that. So the first question comes from Marty down in Mississippi, and he was just asking, uh, the question he has um, is regarding the 330, is the headroom throughout, both under the radar arc and in the lower cabin. Um, yes, Marty, we have been fans, more specifically, I've always been a fan of the Sea Ray. This is our fifth Sea Ray, this 330 Sundancer. Um, and we always come back to that simply because the cabins, even on the smaller boats, always afforded me headroom for my six foot two inch frame. We start off with a 240 Sundancer, a 1976 model year, way back almost 20 years ago, and then subsequently went up to the 268 Sundancer, followed by the 300 Sundancer, and of course the last boat we had prior to this one was the big 400 sedan bridge. Um, and they all gave me lots of headroom down in the cabin. Um, now, coming back to an express cruiser after being seven seasons with our, our last 400 sedan, I knew that this space back here in the cockpit might be a little bit of a challenge for me. Again, we have tons of room down in the cabin. Um, I can walk forward aft all the way through without any issue. The only place I have to duck is in the head, in the toilet compartment, because again, my six foot two, if I was six feet, or maybe if you're five ten, five eleven, you could stand in there comfortably. I have to duck down a little bit, but that is doable, manageable, and workable for me. Um, it's no different than the other Express cruisers that we had. The washrooms were all just a little bit tight in the headroom. And that is simply due to the fact that Sea Ray always places the head compartment off the one side or the other, so it's, you know, the floor is actually following the curvature of the V of the bottom of the hull of the boat, so to make it level, they have to push it up a little bit higher on the floor. But again, that is totally manageable and doable. Um, the only issue that I have here in the cockpit, which again isn't a problem, is that the radar arch is a little bit too low for me. I, I can't stand at the helm. I can walk comfortably through the cabin, or sorry, through the uh, cockpit without any issues what, whatsoever, but I can't stand at the helm. But I'm fine with that. My workaround is I just, when docking the boat or going through a lock, I position myself more right on the helm, right on the, uh, the shifters because then I'm more center line to the boat and I can see what I'm doing and I can look right down the center line of the boat and I find that very, very doable. Now, if one were to look at a, to buy a boat, this specific model, and you are taller like me, again, I'm 6'2", uh, you might consider looking at the 340 um, because the radar arch is quite a bit higher than this and I would then be able to, or somebody of my height would be able to stand at the helm while you're driving. But like I say, it's all manageable, and it, of course it changes the look of the outside of the boat. Um, but I'm fine with it. So I hope that answers your question.
Now the next question I have comes from Kevin down in the Annapolis area and he is asking me something about um, a condition that I've, I've never come across and I've never heard of and he was talking about water ingestion through the exhaust back into the engines that will potentially ruin the engines. Um, sorry buddy but I, like I said I have never heard of that and we are on Sea Ray number 5 and um, this is a similar type of engine setup as we had in our last boat in our 400 sedan. Uh, this boat is being powered by twin 454 GM big blocks with a 7.4 liter fuel injection. The last boat they were straight shaft drives um, with through hull exhaust of course with down through the bottom of the boat. And this boat has a similar situation with the same 7.4 liter Merc cruisers but they're V drives but the exhaust works the exact same way. Now, if anybody's familiar with this vintage of boat, you'll uh, come to understand that Sea Ray has offered and, and installed on these their patented underwater exhaust system. And what that means is that the main thrust of the exhaust is actually pushed down underneath the boat. And what that does is reduce the sound above. Like we're cruising right now at about a thousand RPM and I hear more of the water slosh in the background than the actual the engines themselves. Um, a lot of the boats, like the older Carvers and the Regals from the 1980s vintage, um, they were so loud, my God, I don't know how you could drive that boat all day because the exhaust just goes, shoots right out the side of the hull. Um, the only thing, the only time that exhaust will come out of the side of the hull on this boat is when you're driving at a lower speed because there are bypass, uh, there's a bypass sitting uh, set up on the main exhaust. Like I say most of it goes right down underwater, and I'll show you a clip. I think I got a clip from the last boat, the 400, and how that all works when I was changing the uh, holding tank, the poop tank, because I had to remove part of the exhaust on the port side engine just to get the tank, the old tank out, and the new tank in and um, that shows pretty much how it works. Again, it comes from the muffler across and then down shoots out the bottom of the boat. They have like little torpedoes underneath the hull to direct the water back aft. Um, but there are bypass hoses, smaller hoses that come off the main exhaust, which allows some water to shoot out the side. And that's simply because, of course, you would need a lot more pressure. The engine would be run have to be running at a higher RPM to shoot the water down and under to overcome the pressure of the water, of course, in the lake, ocean, the river, wherever you happen to be boating. But uh, that said, um, we never had any issues with water ingestion back into the engine. Uh, I had never heard of anything like that until you brought it up in your uh, with your question. And again, never had that issue on this boat. And I can't see how that even would happen. Um, I know when we bought the last boat, it was the first time that we had a boat that was equipped with an onboard built-in generator, and I had heard Scuttlebutt on the Sea uh, uh, Ray Owners Club website, or clubsearay.com and it's called, sorry, which is a giant forum for mostly Sea Ray owners, but there's a lot of other boat owners that are there as well. And they, some people talk about water possibly being ingested back into the generator, while the, if the generator was running while the boat was moving. So that was initially a concern of mine. So I got in touch with both Sea Ray as well as Westerby, uh, the manufacturer of the generator, just to get their take on it. And both said, uh, should never be a problem. It's not a worry. And so I took them at their word, didn't worry about it. And we did run that generator once in a while, while we were underway. And again, never had a problem with it. So. Uh, that's all I got for you. I'm sorry I didn't, couldn't answer your question any uh, more farther so far as that water ingestion issue, but never heard of it. Okay, today's final question comes from Lawrence, who is, I believe, located in the Georgian Bay area here in Ontario. And his question was, what kind of GoPro do I use? Um, mostly I use the GoPro Hero 3. Um, it's just a basic camera, and, but it works, it works well what I find. Excuse me, it works best 
when you're not filming directly into sunlight. Of course, most cameras will struggle with that, but it really seems to wash out and make things look really, really darker. But other than that, it works good. Now, I do have to do some color correcting with all of the video that I shoot with that, and that leads into the second part of my uh, uh, his question was, what is the editing software that I use for my GoPro specifically, he asked. But uh, I'll give you a general on that because I use the same software for all the video that I share here. I have since day one, and it's called Sony Vegas is the, is the product that I use, and it's Sony Vegas Pro that I think is the issue. And that is a very uh, budget-friendly uh, piece of software. I think the full version is like 50 or 60 bucks at Best Buy, of course, you, or you just buy it online. And I've been using that for quite a few years. I would say at least the last eight years anyways, different versions of it. It's all, they all uh, work basically the same way. I find it very fluid, very easy for me, um, and I will import my GoPro videos as well as the video from this camera I'm filming with right now, the Sony, and even my uh, Pixel phone, which films a beautiful uh, 1080p uh, video capture as well, and I will just throw those all together and use what I need as well as still photos that I introduce as well. So yeah, GoPro Hero 3 is my main GoPro camera. I have an old GoPro Hero 2, I think it is, but I only have one or two batteries for that. It's a bit of a pain to charge that thing, but it, it still takes really, really good footage as well. Um, now that said, for anybody who is looking at an action camera, I just happened to come across, Sony has just introduced, I think it's called the X10. It's a brand new unit. Now it's more higher priced, probably around seven or 800 bucks for that thing. But it seems to be uh, just jam packed full of features, more so than the GoPro. Of course, when GoPro initially came out the first few years, they dominated the market in sports cameras, but pretty much everybody is making them now, and you can get those things as little as you know, 79 bucks if you go to a Made in China website and order them online and you know, willing to wait six weeks to be delivered. Um, not, I can't really talk about the, uh, the, the footage, the quality of the footage, but the GoPro works for me for what I need it to do. Uh, this Sony, which is a higher-end camera, it is phenomenal footage for me. And, um, but again, I'll use a combination of the GoPro, the Sony, and my Pixel phone uh, for the shots that I want or the shots that I get. Um, there is a good saying from a professional photographer that I'll never forget, and he says, when he was asked what's the best camera to use for any given uh, event, and he said the camera that you have with you. And I took that to heart. So if you find yourself not necessarily having uh, access to a GoPro Hero uh, camera, for example, but you have your phone, today's smartphones make amazing video quality. Again, I have the, the, the Pixel phone, the first generation. Uh, Anchor Girl has the iPhone 7, and that thing takes amazing quality footage. If you look at the very, very beginning of my videos, the, the, the intro, the lead-in, where you see this boat Oogaboo coming out of the water on the trailer, she captured that with her uh, iPhone. So yeah, I would just say use whatever you got. <laughs> it's better than waiting around to buy something else or not necessarily have that camera with you. So that's that. So anyways, I hope that answered all your questions. I hope all of you were able to get a little bit of something out of it. Um, the only thing I'm gonna ask for you, if you do have any questions, the best way to get in touch with me is just answer an open, or sorry, ask an open question either on my YouTube channel or on Facebook. Um, and again, I apologize that I don't get back to you right away, but I am inundated with questions and private messages lately. I, obviously, as the channel grows and my Facebook channel expands, or my Facebook page expands, I get more and more questions, and I, I do my best to get back to you, all of them. It's just that sometimes it takes me a little bit longer than uh, some people would expect or anticipate. So that's it.
from today's beautiful boating day in September out here on Lake Simcoe aboard Booga Boom. Thanks for watching. Thanks for following. Cheers. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe so you don't miss any of the new videos coming out. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Daily updates there and always lively conversation on Facebook so you don't want to miss it. And you can also follow us at BoatsBeachesAndBars.com where you can find even more links to all sorts of neat things including our online store. And you'll find all the links to everything mentioned up here, down there, in the description. So you'll have no excuse not to follow along. Thanks again and we'll see you soon.